welcome back. We are continuing our series of tutorials to get ourselves to a Python certification. We've gotten through the bulk of items and I've started actually looking at the sample tests that they have. Um, you'll find a link for it in the show notes. And really it was just to sort of make sure that we've covered things in a way that will be helpful uh, besides just understanding some of the topics, but actually sort of understanding how they're going to be used. And one of those, uh, well, actually several things, um, one that I'm going to sort of focus on today is uh, mostly because of a complex uh, example and a couple little things related to it that I don't think we covered specifically enough it has to do with for loops. But then there are some other things that I think I may have underestimated, uh, or I could potentially be underestimating what people know. So it's good to make sure you're clear on it. The first of those is the idea of mutable versus immutable objects. The key in Python is to know that native types, uh, integers, doubles, times, strings, those are all immutable. Booleans, they are immutable. Tuples and ranges also are immutable. Other things are mutable, not immutable. So a list, a dictionary, those things are mutable. The difference between them, the concept of mutable versus immutable, is that either the memory stamp where something exists changes or it does not. So if you were to, for example, let's just sort of say, let's say that you've got in memory, you've got this thing, uh, A, B, C, D, that's a string, okay? And this is uh, in memory slots, and what is that, zero through three for those. And then you, and let's say you assign a variable, uh, let's say X equals that string then that means that x is a pointer to uh, basically zero. And then there's going to be something to let you know when it's done. And, you know, I don't want to get too complicated into it. Now, if you assign x equals, uh, let's say, x, y, z, then what's going to happen in this case is that a, b, c, d is not going to, ex going to change. There now is going to be, there's going to be, let's say at five, six, seven, you're going to have X, Y, Z and memory slots five through seven, All right? Four, five, six, seven, yes. And that memory slot four is probably going to be a string terminator. Uh, it gets into pointer arithmetic a little bit that you may or may not have been exposed to. If it is mutable, that would mean that instead what would happen is that ABCD would be essentially overwritten as opposed to here where it's saying it's a string. So that string exists and this variable points to it. Here, I'm gonna create another string somewhere in memory and then point the variable to it. I'm not going to override the memory for the string. And that works for any of the native types and tuples and ranges. That's really what you need to know because there are like a couple of questions related to that. And I just, I know I have not really, we haven't really covered that at all. So I wanna make sure that we brought that up. Similarly, I wanna make sure you understand one of the things that I saw that sparked this idea is understanding powers, uh, exponent, exponents. So X to the Y. And that one, let me move this. And let me do I think it's easier to show some examples. So I'm going to take a bunch of these. 
are all going to be strings, so I'm going to do it this way. I want to show you something here. So if I do 0 to the 0 power, 0 to the 1 power, and 0 to the second power. And now let me take uh, 3 to the 0 power, 10 to the 0 power, and this number to the 0 power. So let's look at those first. And we'll see 0 to the 0 is 1, as is 3 to 0, 10 to the 0, or this big number of the 0. Anything to the 0 power or z power, if you say it that way, is equal to 1. That includes 0. Other than that, other than that, 0 to any power is 0. And so if I even do 0 to the negative 74th power, I think it'll read that right. Hopefully it will. Nope. Uh, I need to do it that way. Oh, it says it cannot be raised to a negative power. So if you go to 0 to the negative power, it's going to give you an exception, which you may have to run into. Um, let's go any other number. Uh, oops, so I can't do that. But I can now do this, and it's just going to give you it. So 0, and let's do that. Um, 0 to a negative is an exception, we'll say. It cannot calculate. But it can anything else. I think that's important because they do have some questions related to those. And we've not really, it was just sort of assumed that you understood exponents. And if you're a little fuzzy with them, especially these little rules, um, it's good to know. Now, another thing we haven't talked about is we've done prints, P-R-I-N-T-S. We have done print commands, but there are two things we've not talked about. We have not talked about the SEP, nor have we talked about the END. And let's just do a, a, a. So normally when we print, we print and it just, it gives us a new line. So see here that we just get a, a new line here. Um, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'll do that for now. So let's do this, the ends first. Let's throw a few of those. So what I'm going to do here, so now if I do the 1, 2, 3 with an end and then end on an A, let's look at those. So here, um, let me do, this gets hard to read, example 2. Example one. Now let's do this. End of application. And we're going to put an extra little one here just to be sure. Okay, so now let's look at it. So if you look here, example one, it prints, but notice that it does not do. Now instead, so instead of the end being an end line, which we would have here. So if we get rid of this guy and run it, we're gonna see what looks more familiar. See, we see the uh, one, two, three, because it's doing 
you can do commas, uh, you can do multiple items within your print. So it's gonna do those and it just prints them all on one line. And it gives us a line fee. If I say don't do that, whoops. If I say don't do that and do an end, now that one, two, three, notice it does have a little space between those. So it shows us that that's a set, essentially that's different items. And the end now is only on a you know an empty string so what the end thing is an empty string it's not a return so it doesn't give us that line feed and then it dives right into uh, example two notice here and this is just to be clear on it so at the end of the line here instead of adding a blank i'm going to add an a so here it does 1a 2a 3a and it still does those little spaces to split the list essentially and then at the end of the line it does an a so i could also do like i can do end of line and it'll come back with an eol there you go so end tells me what i want to put at the end of my line if i want to change something around a little bit this is very important if you're doing like comma separated lists or something like that and so for example let's take the same thing and I think I've got some, yeah. So now, uh, let's do this. I'm just gonna print so I get space. And let's look at these, now let's look at the SEP. Now SEP matters only if I've got a series. So if I look at this first one, that one, two, three, that's where it's at. That separator is a empty string. So now instead of the space, which is the default, it crams them together. Here I use a sep of a hashtag and you can see here where it puts a hashtag at the end of each of those. And so that would commonly be where like, let's say I wanted to do a pipe delimited thing that would build out my list of items. Oh, and I now get a pipe delimited series of items. However, uh, if I do, do I have a list floating around here somewhere? I don't. So let's do one more thing and let's do uh, my list equals one comma two comma three. And now let's do my list with a separator of a pipe. And notice that it doesn't separate because the list, it's printing out the whole list. It's not doing anything special with it. Therefore, we're getting this, uh, this is what we're getting. As we're getting the list in the, uh, sort of the string representation of the list. So we would have to, and, uh, Similarly, just to be clear, if I do for x in my list, and then let's just do, uh, let's do it here, let's just do print x comma separator equals this thing. Then I'm still not gonna get what I want. So it prints each of these because the separator doesn't print, it's only between items. So what I would have to do is I would have to change it to be this. And then I'm gonna get my one, two, three, but then I've got that extra one at the end. So you, you know, you've got a couple of different ways you can get to it, but particularly if you're doing a series of things, you can play around with separators. We didn't see it very often, but it does show up in the test uh, apparently. And the ends uh, is good to know, and we haven't played around with that. So I wanted to like take a look at those two. Uh, let's see. So this, I wanted to look specifically. Uh, let's see. There's my list. Okay, so let's move this down. Oh, let's do this first. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about before. Whoop, whoop. There we go. I don't think we specifically spent enough time in what you do if you come back, if you grab 4x in sample, where sample is a dictionary. And that is that it is a key. 
So if we print, and it's home, one, two, three, the, the three items are home and an address, office and an address, bill and an address. If we print the sample itself, uh, it is here. Oh, yeah, because I don't have the line. So it just gives us a nice string representation of it that we see here. If we do samples.keys, then it gives us a collection of dictionary keys with those three keys. If we do value, if we do uh, sample.values, and you guys will have seen this before when we did the dictionary example, we get the three values. If we do for X and sample, it's going to go through the keys. So you see the keys here, home, office, and bill. Well, X is home, office, and bill. So if we wanted to print the items from here, we would actually do uh, sample sub X will give us those three addresses. So let's see, you go there, we get our three addresses. So reminder that if you do a 4X in a dictionary, it's not giving you the objects, the pairs, it's giving you the keys. Now, if you want to do, so if I do X comma Y, and let's do k comma value in sample. Then I can print k is plus k and v is plus v. I don't think we've played with this one too much. Too many values to unpack in this case because it's only giving me keys. But if I were to do, uh, let's do, uh, because it's not, what I want is not key value pairs. So if instead I do, let's do sample two. And here, so I can come in here and I can see that K is what I'm assigning the first value, home, office, bill. V is what I'm assigning the second value, each of those three addresses. And so I could make that very complicated. I could have three or four items, and I can assign all of them out. I can also do this with classes. So there are a lot of things I can do where I can be, I can break something out uh, basically within a loop and assign out some values all at the same time. We didn't really cover that, so I wanted to make sure that we did touch into that one. And then another one I want to make sure I get into is, um, well, first off, let me do this one because this is a quick one. So if I look at sample two, if I do print sample two, but I do print, uh, let's do sample three. equals sample two, and then I do uh, sample two, oh, let me see, oh, so if I did delete sample two, and we'll leave it there, so first let's just do this. Uh, so I'm gonna delete sample two item, I'm gonna do negative one, and then I'm gonna print sample two again. Let's just do it that way. That's gonna be the easiest way to show this. And so what I get here is I'm not able to do it, but if I do zero to negative one. Oh shoot. I want that's not how I want to do it anyways. Let me do this. So if I do zero to negative one, that's one I want to see. Because you will see that. So um, let's see. So I come through via answer. So I come here. Here's the whole thing. But if I go zero to negative one, it's going to build out. It gets rid of the last item. If I go zero to negative two, see it starts it. It's going to end up and it deletes. Uh, yeah, so it deletes the first one. If you notice here, if I do negative one, 
actually, let me do this this way. It's going to be easier to compare these two. So I want to compare these two. So if I go 0 to negative 1, blah, 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 blah. I'll print sample 2. Let's do this. Sample 3 equals sample 2. Whoop. And then I'm going to print through all of that. And then I'm going to do 2 equals sample 3. So I'm going to rebuild that. All right, so now look. And note, that I lost it. Okay. So print sample two. I do that. If I delete that and present sample two, <clears throat> then I get this guy. It's the only one that's left. And if I come in here, go zero to negative two. So let me do this. Because it's gonna be easier. Let's just do this. Sorry. Okay, there we go. So sample two, if I go from zero to negative one, this is where I start, it gets rid of this guy and this guy. I'm sorry, this, this guy and this guy. If the range goes from zero to negative two, then he gets rid of just this guy because now he hasn't run around enough. But if I started with zero, negative two, oh, that is what I did, okay. Is that, uh, note that I'm losing this guy in each case. If I go zero to negative four, in this case, I end up getting rid of nothing because I can't go to that, it's an invalid range. If I do negative one, well, it pulls the last item off. If I do negative two, it's gonna pull the middle item off. So Baker Street disappears. So if I go negative on it, then it's going to go, it starts up here and then it counts backwards. So you can get some sort of funky kind of stuff that goes into it. So remember your negative start, essentially your negative start at the right versus the left. Now they do have, I want to throw this, this one out there just to sort of walk through something. They have this very complex question, which is this guy. It basically says how many stars are printed. The key is this thing is we've got this for C, uh, C for C in range R, which is a list for R in range three. So if we just do the four R in range three, we know that that's gonna be zero, one, two, right? So if we go look, we'll see that that is zero, one, and two. Now this is where it becomes complicated. So it's gonna create this set where C is in range R, but R is zero, one, and two. And so the set is gonna be in the first one, the range zero, we don't do anything at all. So the set is an empty set. When you do range one, oh, let me do this. When you do range one, then it's gonna be uh, zero to one. And so you're gonna come here, you're gonna get one, and then it's gonna be zero is the only thing that's gonna be in there. Two, the items in the range are zero and one. So that's your sets. And then it comes out and says, okay, for X in list, and list is this thing. So the list items are empty set, set with zero, and a set with zero and one. And so it's going to come into the empty list, and it's going to say for y and x. So there's nothing there. It's an empty set, so nothing happens. The next time through, it comes for 0. If 0 is less than 2, print a star. Yes, it does. 
The next time it comes through, and it's going to go 0, 0 is less than 2, print a star. And then 1, 1 is less than 2, print a star. And so in the end, it's going to print three stars. So it's very, very complicated looking, but not terribly so. Oh, and that reminds me of one other thing because of order operations. Um, another thing to remember is that if you do exponents, those are not left to right. So if I go 2 to the 3 to the 2, or let's say to the 4, I don't do 2 to the 3, which is 8, and then 8 to the 4th, which is, what is that, 256. Instead, I do 3 to the 4th, which is 81, and then 2 to the 81, and that's going to be a huge number. So if I do this, right before that x, let's just do this here. And so it's going to be a huge number, not 256. Yeah, so it's a huge number, which is not the same as if I do this. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not the same as if I do this. Let me change the order of operation. 4096. So you go from the outside first, so the right to the left when you're doing exponents, uh, as far as order of operations. They'll do for this first part. I only this is only actually covering the first half of the test as I went through it and wanted to bring had some notes on some additional things I wanted to bring up. Uh, I apologize for maybe not being as clear or not getting into some of these before, but I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to go take a look at the second half of the test and see what kind of notes I have that come out of that. As we're, we're getting pretty darn close, we are almost there. So uh, you can see all of this out in the repository, GitHub repository, where we have uh, links in the show notes. I'll get that caught up and uh, go out there, have yourself a great day, a great week, and we will talk to you next time.